Thank you. Thank you, uh, Brooke, for the nice introduction and for bringing Creative Mornings to Kansas City. That's bravo again. So, um, not about you guys, but the, r the reason I'm here this morning is because of those donuts. <laughs> Got about three hours of content, so if you stick around, we can have donut lunch. <laughs> this is a point of view from a gentleman named Howard Zinn, who is an American historian. Uh, and social activist, and uh, it's a quote from Norm Chomsky, uh, the director, the uh, uh, philosopher, I guess, who um, recently came out with the film uh, *Requiem for an American Dream*. Uh, and Norm was quoting Howard, and I'm quoting Norm. It goes something like that. Anyway, uh, the thought is. Uh, this, which is, what matters are the countless small deeds of unknown people who lie the basis for the significant events that enter, the, enter history. They're the ones who've done things in the past, and they're the ones who will do things in the future. What I love about that is it tells us that the unknown people of the world can make a difference, the small people us. Uh, we can change the world. And it's true because the historian said it's true. <laughs> Imagine if we spent the next 30 minutes, this room full of creative people, just trying to solve a problem. Uh, we would first need to start with what's broken. Well, our planet is broken. Our planet is broken because our ozone is broken. Global warming is happening, despite what my father believes. 50% of Congress, 50-ish percent of Congress. It's not because people don't believe that, uh, people in Congress don't believe that, or don't like breathing clean air. It's because they like money more than they like breathing clean air. The way we communicate is broken. <laughs> Here's an example. <laughs> I'm not communicating with you, but I'm communicating. We use emojis in place of words. We use acronyms in place of sentences. We text versus talk. I mean, WTF. <laughs> we are not connecting. We are often not present and not engaged. We can do better. Education is broken, particularly in my home state of Kansas, where politics is becoming more important in the future of our children's education. Teachers are undervalued and therefore underpaid. College is becoming increasingly expensive, even for the middle class. Our food ecosystem is broken, completely effed. Can I say that? <laughs> In an effort to feed the world, we've fed large food companies extraordinary profits. We've genetically modified ourselves into a corner. And the best uh, recognition of that is, is food, label, food labels. Food labels tell that story, because food labels tell us what's not in the food. They're starting from the perspective of there's listing things that aren't in the food. So the art, and that's based on the perception of consumers, which is there are bad things in our food. So they have to start by telling us on the packaging that these things are not in our food. The best example I could find was Trix. Uh, recently, I think they redesigned their 
their package. And it was very simple, and it, just, it was just as simple as this, which is there's no high, high fructose corn syrup, no colors from artificial sources, no artificial flavors. There's a lot of nothing in there. <laughs> so what's in there? What are we, what are we eating if we're, we're, we have none of that stuff? Well, they're, they're telling us that because at one time, that stuff was in there, and it made the tricks look really nice. <coughs> made the, the cereal really colorful. As it turns out, color causes cancer. So now we're eating that. I'm sure it tastes the same, but you have to ask the question. If that's bad for us, why were we eating that in the first place? I mentioned uh, food economy, and I don't even know if I know what that means. So I looked up the word economy, uh, and thanks for going on this mental field trip with me. Uh, economy has two definitions. They're both nouns. One, the wealth and resources of a country or region, especially in terms of production and consumption of goods and services. The synonym for that definition is wealth. The number two definition is careful management and available resources. The synonym of that, synonym of that definition is restraint. So the word economy in and of itself is kind of at odds with itself. It's, doesn't know if it's, if it's wealthy or if it's showing restraint. You know I know? Because Google told me so. <laughs> All men are created equal. Unless you're a female. <laughs> Black, gay, Syrian, bi, Muslim, the list goes on. One of these sentences is more true. <laughs> Equality is broken. Does oil have any, de any redeeming qualities? Let's move on. <laughs> I can't take credit for this. But politics is broken. Somebody really smart recently said, I can't remember who it was, uh, said that we don't hold Donald Trump to the same standards as a politician. He held, he's held to the standard of a reality show host. They're right. He can say whatever he wants. doesn't matter. So that's kind of creepy. Um, <laughs> Donald's hair is broken. <laughs> Healthcare is broken, and everybody's to blame. The health insurance companies, the drug companies, the hospitals, the list goes on. Neil Patterson, CEO of Cerner, once said, I want to take down the insurance industry. He, want, uh, he had a product that um, was like corporate clinics where there's no, there's no hospital involved, there's no... Um, insurance company involved, the clinic is within the organization. So, I mean, that's a pretty bold statement, so we wanted to show him some bold ads. Uh, and here are, here are a couple. Blue Cross Red Tape. Something's wrong with healthcare. <laughs> In Humana. Benefits should be beneficial. Nation wrong. Cost of a bad plan is going up. People are broken. But not all people. I met this little gal in El Salvador while shooting some commercials for Unbound. And uh, I had a bit of my own personal journey happen while I was there as well. Um, Maybe I was broken. Maybe, uh, maybe the world doesn't need another creative person selling hamburgers to children. So I had some, uh, a lot of internal thoughts and realized that you know, maybe I found my own purpose uh, on this journey. Uh, and when I returned, I, I created Nuance and got to work on 
clients like water.org. It was started by this guy and that other guy you might know, uh, Gary White and Matt Damon. So uh, water.org is living right here in Kansas City and doing great work and they have a purpose and their purpose is to provide innovative market-based solutions that change lives every day through safe water and sanitation. They're saving lives with water. And they have a unique problem identified. One in 10 people lack access to clean water, safe water. Or, if that's not good enough, one in three people lack access to a toilet. And if that's not good enough, in the world today, more people have a cellular phone than have a toilet. So they've defined their problem. I got to help them with a social media campaign around Christmas time last year. Um, we were aiming to, to speak to mothers, females who were shopping, um, and use these, these gifts, so to speak, as ways to point out that sometimes we take things for granted. Uh, like Aquaman. Water-related diseases kill more than a million people each year. Fighting makes supervillains look like child's play. One gift little billions of girls want is a toilet. Not a Barbie toilet. One in ten people live without one. Here's a Fitbit. In Africa and Asia, women and children walk an average of 3.7 miles a day just to collect water. That's exercise. Unbound is another organization living right here in Kansas City doing great work. And they have a purpose. Uh, Unbound challenges poverty in developing countries in innovative ways through, method, through methods of, of sponsorship. They have a, a unique point of view, which is what can we learn from the marginalized? versus what can we provide them. That's, that's, that's a different perspective. That's a brand new lens. Uh, and it's been very effective and, um, and meaningful and they're getting great results. So the spot I'm going to show you uh, that I created for them was, um, was actually a spot that, that focuses on what the sponsor gets out of sponsorship, not what the, what the family gets out of it. We assume they get all the, all the essentials, which is true. But actually, uh, this, this spot focuses on what the sponsor gets out of it. Alam nyo, nung una kang nakilala si Nico, hindi siya nag-aaral, hindi kasi kaya enay niyang matrikula. Nayon, dahil tinutulong ko siya, nakakapag-aaral na si Nico. Tumutulong pa siya sa kanyang pamilya. Talagang masayang masaya ako para sa kanila. You could say he taught me a few things along the way, too. You change their world. They change your world. Habitat, they're right here in our backyard as well, doing fantastic work. A Habitat for Humanity works to fulfill the dream of American home ownership for low to medium income families in the urban core. They're not just doing work here, they're doing it nationally. The benefits are not just to the homeowners and the volunteers who help create the houses. The benefits are to the neighborhood, the community, and it creates a stronger city. Home is the foundation of many great things. Uh, one of those is education, as this spot suggests. So those are the three companies that are doing great work locally. Uh, on a much larger scale, we have organizations like the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, uh, and they have a purpose. They believe all lives are created equal. We are important, we are impatient optimists working to reduce inequality. That's a pretty cool statement. 
I can get behind that. So they're doing a lot of cool stuff. Uh, they're well funded. Um, <laughs> so they can sit back and choose problems they want to solve. And one of the problems that they're solving right now is um, this idea that 40% of the world's population practices open defecation and has improper uh, has an improper facility. So there's no dignity in that. 40% of the world not having a facility to use. So they've, uh, they've created a challenge, which is, and it's the RTTC, the Reinvent the Toilet Challenge. Uh, and as you can imagine, the Gates Foundation was probably using technology to figure this out. So uh, the funded research develops a truly aspirational next generation toilet which does not require water, does not require electricity, does not require sewer, and it costs less than five cents per day to use. That's the criteria. So they're handing out grants to organizations who want to figure that out. Right now there are 16 working on it. 16 grants have been awarded. That's pretty cool. Uh, Mr. Gates uh, is also involved with another organization. He and Mr. Buffett got together and they made a little, made a little club. <laughs> kind of a billionaire's club. But in a cool way. They've, uh, they've formed the Giving Pledge. The Giving Pledge is a commitment by the world's wealthiest individuals and families to dedicate a majority of their wealth to phil philanthropy. Membership is pretty basic, has two, two key uh, qualifications. One, your net worth is over a billion dollars. Two, you donate over 50% of your wealth to charity. You can do those two things, you're in the club. Uh, to date, 139 individuals, billionaires, have donated or pledged $365 billion to charity. That's big. That's a big idea. You don't need to be a billionaire to make a difference in this world. You can have an idea. Uh, even if your idea is silly or sounds stupid, like asking people to dump water on their head. <laughs> The Ice Bucket Challenge raised more than $115 million in six weeks by getting people to film themselves by dumping water in their bed. Sounds pretty stupid, huh? <laughs> the best part of uh, ALS, this, this Ice Bucket Challenge, is um, it wasn't done by an ad agency, a PR firm, social media company, production company. It was done. It was founded, it was conceived by three individuals living with the disease. It makes it pretty special. Honda discovered a problem a few years ago. They recognized that diesel engines are loud and dirty and inefficient and smell and stink and are horrible. <laughs> So they acknowledged that, um, they, you know, they recognized that the, the engines that they were creating were bad. So they wanted to fix that. The beauty of the spot is they recognized the problem within the body of the spot. They recognized, you know, we're making a shitty product. They raised their hand, they put, you know, they put their guards down and were vulnerable. And that was kind of an interesting and strong strategy about 10 years ago. And it, I think it shows through, shows through um, in how effective this spot is. Here's a little song for anyone who's ever hated in the key of grrr. Can hate be good? Can hate be great? Can hate be good? Can hate be great? Can hate be something we don't hate?
We'd like to know why it is so that certain diesels must be slow and thwack and thrum and plong and hum and clatter clat. Hate something, change something, hate something, change something, make something better. Oh, isn't it just bliss when a diesel goes like this? Sing it like you hate it. Hate something, change something, hate something, change something, make something better. Everybody, now. <laughs> they recognized the problem. They applied a purpose. They applied creativity. They told a great story. So beautifully art directed. This next piece of content is probably one of the most compelling pieces of content I've experienced in my time. Um, it's, it's a beautiful way of, of recognizing how money can heal. Um, it's done by uh, Leo Burnett in Peru for the Peruvian Children's Cancer Foundation. feel it every time I watch it. Um, trying to look at that spot from a like back out of that before, like six months before that produced, there was a storyboard. And on that storyboard, I'm sure that it was, it looked okay. It looked like a pretty good spot. But then they executed it flawlessly. Like, that's just a great story. This, the music score is just wonderful. So, the magic of giving. Um, Not-for-profits can make a difference. Brands can make a difference. Corporations can make a difference. The unknown people of the world can make a difference. We can make a difference. What does it take? It takes being able to recognize a problem and wanting to solve it. takes the understanding of purpose and applying it to that problem. And then the easy part is applying creativity, at least for the people in this room. Dr. Zeus said it best. Unless anyone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's just not. That's the Lorax. <laughs> he speaks for the trees. Thank you.